Greg, do your line, man. Stop playing with Tara. Do your line. And Nickelodeon got so mad at me for doing that. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on Teen Titans Go. Just think of a random voice she probably voiced. Yeah, I wonder if uh, the fans want a season six of Teen Titans. Do you? You're watching convention coverage. Yo, 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 party animals, what up? Waffles. And don't forget Wingman G. Everybody say hi to Wingman. He's in Young Justice now. <laughs> How you guys doing today? How's it been going? Sacramento is freaking an amazing, dude. Oh man, are you guys having a good time today? <laughs> Can I get a booyah? Booyah! Oh yeah. There you go. Maybe you can get people to sing waffles. Ready? Waffles, waffles, waffles. Waffles, waffles, waffles. Waffles, waffles, waffles. Waffles, waffles, waffles. Waffles! Waffles! Waffles, waffles. Waffles, 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 waffles. That's oh. going to be the whole panel now. I know. We're just going to keep doing that. I met a kid who could speak pancakes, too. I never met that before. It's like, it's a slight variation on waffles, you know, but it's pretty much the same language because there's syrup involved. Pancakes? Man, that just really, don't, no, that, that, that didn't go very well. They all can't be gems, people. They all can't be gems. I was like, where is he going with that one? It went home. It went home and closed the door, and now it's crying. But really, we're here for you all, so I think it would be really fun to actually have you all come up and ask questions right away. Cause there you go. We are really here for you. That's why we travel around the world doing these Comic-Cons. Absolutely, a, baby. And it's the best when we're together. So, yeah, we'll, we'll go up one at yeah, a time. So come on up. Ask don't be questions. shy. If you got a question, come on up. There you go. It's $20 a question. Oh, shoot. <laughs> That's payable directly to me. me. I'm just joking. I'm joking. Uh, hi, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day so far. Uh, my question is, what was it like voice acting the same characters, Cyborg, Raven, and Beast Boy between Teen Titans and Teen Titans Go? Were there any differences that came up while portraying the characters between the two? I mean, absolutely. There were, there He's were, like, uh, which one is which? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, man, it was, uh, it was so much fun to... The, the cool thing is, is, is that uh, by the time we got to Teen Titans Go, there was so much of us. In the uh, in the characters mm -hmm. that uh, that we kind of uh, let it let it uh, lead us, you know the um, you know the whole BB Ray shipping like like uh, Beast Boy and and Raven. It was just it was just because Greg and uh, and and uh, and Tara were just having such a good time in the booth together, and it just seemed right. You know what I mean? It was like it was like I could I couldn't get them to. I was like Greg, Greg, <laughs> do your line, man. Stop playing with Tara. Do your line. You know, and it was like it was like okay, they're obviously in love. Let's make, let's get them in love, and real, you know, on, on the cartoon. So we just kind of let it lead us, you know? I mean, we, uh, I, I don't know which came first between uh, Beast Boy and Cyborg when they became like best friends, but, uh, but it was like from way back, man, some of my, my best experiences in the water surfing with, uh, with Greg, it was just like one of those things. We came together and that's my bro, baby. <laughs> Thank you right. so much. Did that answer pretty. your question? I don't even know if that answered your question. No, I, I was just going to say it was really pretty, but it did not answer his question. Oh, okay, where well, do you go? You know well, what? I'll answer it. I'll answer it for you. We, we're really the same people. That's what he's saying. We're saying we feel like we've grown with these characters, so the essence is the same. Mm -hmm. So when we envision these characters, we don't think, oh, now we're in go, except for the fact that we're doing ridiculous things like in elevators <laughs> or not really fighting bad guys. So mm -hmm. it's like lighter and funnier, but it's still our essence. That's what you were trying to say. Right, That's baby? exactly what I was trying to say. <laughs> All the <laughs> in an elevator is not ridiculous <laughs> if you really got to go. You know, sometimes you just got to go. I get that. You know, you that. pick a corner and you go with it. You know, there are things you learn on Teen Titans Go. That's right. And then there are yeah, things yeah, you don't. not to get involved in pyramid schemes, right? <laughs> Eat your you. vegetables in moderation, you know? Making that money, that pyramid scheme money. That's right, baby. You got to stay away from that, you know. I still remember the first day of our recording session for Teen Titans Go. The president of Warner Brothers Animation and Cartoon Network, Sam Register, was in there and he goes, Greg, the only note I have for you is make Beast Boy more like you. And I was like, I could do that, bro. <laughs> Absolutely, man. That's the key. I don't remember a lot, but I remember that. I love it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Thank man. You so Thank much. you so much. I appreciate much. it. 
question is, after taking these characters from you know, comic books and making such a different iteration than we've ever seen, like, how does that feel, knowing that your versions is what we're all gonna think of for a long time? You owe us your life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that you said that so much, because we know how important that is. Like, we know, we love it so much. I mean, the fact that these characters were already loved in comics and you know, people collect them when they're kids. These are things that people grow up with forever and keep them and save them and read them and, and imagine what those voices sound like. And the artists would hear our voices in their heads while they were drawing. And then it's this collaborative process that brings it all to life in animation and then it connects with fans and it's this like beautiful circle of creativity and love that's connecting us all. And we, we've loved meeting every artist of every comic and they're like, they say when they're drawing us, George Perez said when he, when he saw us, he would, like, he would hear our voices when he, when he drew. And he's like, you, you, as soon as I heard you, I knew you were my raven. So, oh, wow. That's really sweet. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, feel like, I feel like a proud papa. I mean, before our show, you know, hardcore comic fans knew of, uh, you know, the Teen Titans and they knew of, of uh, Starfire and uh, obviously Robin and, and uh, Beast Boy, Raven, and Cyborg, but... But I think uh, after, the, uh, after the first uh, series of uh, Teen Titans, you know, all of those characters just took a jump. They, they, uh, they, they went to the next level. And, um, and uh, you know, like everybody knows Beast Boy and Raven and Cyborg and, and Starfire and, and Robin now, and they know them as a team and they know them as family now because, uh, because it's hard to, to, you know, sometimes, sometimes kids don't even know, they were like, wait, Robin is, uh, is Batman's, you know, a sidekick. <laughs> yeah. I thought he was just the leader of Teen Titans, you know what I mean? It was like, uh, no, we got to, yeah, we got to teach him uh, all about it. Exactly. What? That's wild. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> it's crazy. Because when I was growing up as a little kid, Batman was always the main guy, and Robin was like the sidekick who you, you didn't hear about much, but now it's almost like Robin's more popular than Batman. Yeah, man, they just had to give him pants and not those I don't know why he's got such baby hands, yo. Exactly. Although, if you're, if, you're, if you're as Robin and you're wearing tiny little shorts, I'm sure your thighs are amazing. <laughs> I'm just trying to be inclusive. Okay, next question. I'm going to get in trouble. I'm getting a look from Tara. Thank you so much. My question to you guys is, uh, first of all, thank you for the Freakazoid Hug Bees episode. And um, because of that, um, how did that episode Hug Bees come together? Wait, Hug Bees? Yeah, the Freakazoid episode. I mean, you take hugs and you take beasts and you smash them together till you get yourself an episode. Hug Bees! Absolutely, that's how we do it. That is how we do it. <laughs> We could basically make an episode about anything on Teen Titans Go. A lot of times they bug our calls and they listen to our phone calls without yeah. knowing, and then they make episodes about it. <laughs> you know, what? one one of our writers was like having trouble like buying a house, and so we literally did a, a show about mortgages to help him. You know, <laughs> like like that, that's that's how it works. You know, we get hungry, we make a story about sandwiches. That you know, it, it's real simple. You know, we're just trying to solve our own problems. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you, bro. Thank you. Some question. Yeah. What, so you see, I know that sometimes you guys do multiple shows at once, mm -hmm. and I know that Friendship is Magic and Teen Titans Go were airing at the same time, mm -hmm. and Team NT 2012 and Teen Titans Go were airing at the same time. How did it feel like having to like voice similar sounding characters, but in, in entirely different shows? Shows like sometimes did you accidentally mesh them together? Like did you accidentally say something that Mikey would say when you were <laughs> recording for Beast Boy, or did you accidentally say something that Twilight would say when recording for Raven, or vice versa? Yo, there's <laughs> there's Beast Boy up here, yo, and there's Booyakasha, and really not just the voice is different, but. The place I go to in my third eye when I'm living in these worlds is very real. So there was never a time where I made a mistake and kind of crossed over, but they're, they're similar in, in, the, in the vein that they're all just different parts of who I am. But there was a time where or there was an episode where we did a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles episode. You remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, we like, got in trouble for yeah, that episode. I got in, yeah, Nickelodeon got so mad at me for doing that. <laughs> They were like, you can't do Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on Teen yeah. Titans Go. I didn't, I didn't get in trouble. I didn't get in trouble with the ponies. Oh, yeah? Well, no. well, he got, I remember, he was like, he was like, dude, I got yelled at at Nickelodeon <laughs> for doing Titans. You can't play Michelangelo on, teenage, on Teen no, Titans Go. No, you can't. You can't. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. 
I loved when they did the little ponies with Raven. And obviously, I wouldn't mix up their voice because this is Raven. And Twilight's up here, so that'd be really weird. If I confuse those two, I shouldn't be working as much as I do. Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. I've, well, ta I've taught her everything she knows. Yeah. 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 Now, they love uh, doing the crossover, especially in the beginning when they didn't ask for permission. We did uh, Young Justice, and, uh, and Aqualad was on, uh, on the show. And there was a, a very serious episode that wasn't very serious. But I got to do, uh, got to do Calder and, and Cyborg at the same time. And it's always a lot of fun. Oh, that, that is pretty cool. And I suppose Tara got a pass because Raven is canonically a brony. She always gets a pass. Yeah, absolutely. She is the Tara Strong. She gets a pass any time. Oh, you bet. Thank you for your time. Absolutely. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Come on up. I was wondering, you guys remember the episode where, where the series ended where... Beast Boy meets his uh, girlfriend, but she has her mind erased. Then yeah. The series kind of ended. Yeah. Well, why did the show end? It was so good. You know what? Back then, uh, at, at Cartoon Network or Warner Brothers or something, they, they, were, they felt like, like shows had to end after a certain amount of episodes. And for some mm -hmm. reason, they, were, they just decided that that, that was the, the time to cancel it. And mm -hmm. uh, we didn't want to be canceled. But um, and so, because because uh, we absolutely had more story to tell, but they told us that that this was going to be the end, and we were trying to figure out, you know, how to tell that story and how to end it, and um, and uh, so the idea was is that uh, you know, what's the last thing we learn as teenagers, you know, and mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes things don't, you don't get all of your questions answered, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes you graduate from high school and you don't see people anymore <laughs> that you used to. You know, you don't have that closure that you, that you uh, expected or wanted. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's what we were doing. We were trying to say that things change sometimes and you just got to grow up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and so, and so that's the story that we were telling. And, um, and it wasn't really, uh, we didn't mean to, to uh, leave it open, you know, mm -hmm. as if we were going to answer the question. It was more like, you know what, sometimes it sucks because we actually, we didn't want to end. <laughs> yeah. Just like Beast Boy didn't want to end his relationship with Tara. It was just something. Yeah, it's not sweet. over. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, it is. It's hey, done, hey, Mama. Yeah, yeah. I'm right here. It's done. You're totally done. done. Dead. There's You're no dead. more Tara in my life. <laughs> You're exactly. Dead. And also, by the way, I I didn't know any of that, but I do know that I think it's very possible that they will do a season six because yeah. fans have been asking for it forever. We want to do it. Yeah. Uh, do you, wait? Okay. <laughs> so sometimes, like some. Wait. Yeah. Sometimes studios need to know if you guys still want it. So this, <laughs> we'll send this to Warner Brothers. Yeah, um, you want to ask if they want season six? Yeah, I wonder if uh, the fans want a season six of Teen Titans. Do you? <laughs> season six, season six, season six, season six. <laughs> oh, man. Kari, Kari will send each of you ten dollars for doing that. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, that ought to do it. That ought to do it. Thank you, guys. That was amazing. Hello. Um, I hope you guys just are having a great con, and you're all like so gorgeous, especially Tara. I have a question you're for you. You're gorgeous. Actually. Thank you. I have a question for you. Um, what's your favorite like character to voice? My favorite character I ever voiced was Melody from The Little Mermaid 2. Ooh. Aww. <laughs> you guys are so cute. Stop it. Um, and it's because I was such a fan of The Little Mermaid when I was a little girl. Like, I still had the poster on my room when I moved to Los Angeles when I was 20. And, mm -hmm. like, it was like a dream to play her. And then I get to L.A. and I get to play her daughter and sing in the studio with her. And she shook my hand and I burst into tears and I could have died the next day. <laughs> yeah, I loved Ariel, or Little Mermaid too, And it was amazing. I love that movie. So cute. So, mm -hmm. so adorable. Yeah, I didn't even know you voiced um, Melody in that movie. You yeah. just you just found out this second. Yeah, I just found out. Oops. <laughs> just wow. think of a random voice she probably voiced. Okay, you know what I mean? Mm. She is actually the voice of Tom Brokaw. Nobody knows that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My favorite, thank you. <clears throat> my what's your favorite character? Oh. Right? Oh yeah. Well, um, I mean, C Cyborg is actually my favorite character, but my second favorite was uh, Rafiki. I got to play Rafiki so cool. from the Lion King, the Lion Guard. <gasps> oh. Give us and, uh, a little bit. Give us a well, little bit. Well, you know, sometimes you have to think very deeply about something. And you can't believe that, oh my God, I get to play him. <laughs> I called my mother. I said, Mom, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> I am Rafiki from the Lion Guard. All right, yeah. Rafiki, enough. <laughs> 
That was really cool. Stealing, stealing the show. Give him a round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> that was cool. Good job, Kari. Yeah. I got out of a speeding ticket by being yeah. Rafiki one. I did that with the Powerpuff Girls. I was like, I am in a hurry. You cannot stop me. <laughs> My guy was like, wait, are you a Powerpuff Girl? And he's like, yeah, I have a nine-year-old daughter. I can't give Bubbles a speeding ticket. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I say, when they pull me over, I'm like, I'm Beast Boy. They give me double tickets. <laughs> You're the one who taught my son not how to read. That was funny. You actually said something funny and not, <laughs> and not just weird. <laughs> He's got it all, man. You just got to dig deep. Thank you so much, darling. Yeah, thank you. You look adorable. Thank Thanks. you. Okay, for Greg, if you could describe Beast Boy in a freestyle rap, what would it be? <laughs> yes! 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 Wait, make sure someone's filming this. Peace loving animals. Peace loving animals, that's what I do. Peace loving animals, cause I love you. Coming from the stars, yeah, dog is here. Don't worry, kids, have no fear. It's all about the peace loving animals. 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 Dog bless you, dog bless you, dog bless you, and then you. Cause you know what? Dog's pure loving is coming through. I'm going to stop rapping now because that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Dog bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the fresh beats, y'all. Yes. Uh, I have a question about the original show. If you guys could have added one team member from the comics, to the original Teen Titans show, which one would you have picked? Yeah, the like funny thing the is, in the last season, we added like... 11, <laughs> 11 yeah. extra tight. Let's see, uh, who, would, uh, who would we add? I liked, um, I liked Aqualad. Yeah. I was going to say Aqualad. Yeah? Yeah. yeah Not I like Tara. Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> he will use any excuse to do that voice in front of a crowd. <laughs> you could ask a question that has nothing to do with Mickey Mouse, and he'll find a way to work it into the answer so that he can do that really good impression. <laughs> so thank you for that. We yeah. appreciate it. You're all wrong, Kylo. by the way. The answer is Wally West. But it's like Wally's a good one. <laughs> Wally's a good one. Absolutely. Thank you. What are your guys' favorite line that you have said in Teen Titans Go? Ooh, favorite line? Yo, mama! <laughs> <laughs> my favorite line, you know what? My favorite moment was when, uh, was when Starfire was having trouble with another alien who uh, called, her, uh, called her like a, a screwed up name. There you go. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and uh, Cyborg, the thing about the, the Titans is, is that um, they're all very unique and they know what it me feels like to have people look at them because they're different. And, uh, and that to me in that moment, when he said somebody called you a name because of where you're from or, or what you look like, and, uh, and it made you feel horrible. And she was like, you know what that feels like? And he was like, of course I do, I'm half robot. And that, that, to me, was like the best line of, uh, that, that I've ever said on Titans. Because it's all about, uh, you know, five people who are, aren't like anybody else, and that's what makes them family. You know what I mean? Yeah. Beautiful. Wow, that was like a really good answer. Like, you thought about that. I've been asked it before. <laughs> that and booyah. Uh, what's, your, what's, <laughs> what's your favorite Raven line? Hum. That is hard to pick. It see, is hard to pick. See it's what you did good, to me? Yeah. See? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, babe. I like, I like anything Raven says, but I also thought it was really fun when they animated us talking to ourselves. Yeah. That was pretty cool. <laughs> that whole episode was pretty great. And then when she's like, you don't sound like me. <laughs> that was pretty fun. That's good. Yeah, that was pretty fun. That's good stuff. I like that. We've never had that before where we're actually animated in the cartoon. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was uh, pretty surreal and pretty awesome. I love that we're just taking selfies. Because <laughs> it's true. That's what we did. The exactly. Whole time. <laughs> Thank you, Thank baby. You. Thank Good you so question. much. Come on up. Come on up. What is one dinosaur that you know for a fact you could beat in a fair boxing match? A dinosaur? A, yes. A dinosaur. A dinosaur. Like mm. a fair boxing match, like no biting, no scratching, like just straight up. As Cyborg or different characters? As you. Oh, just as me? Yeah. As Kari. Um, you know, I don't know the actual name, 
But uh, uh, I, I call him Fred, and he's tiny. He's about this big. Uh -huh. You know? And I don't box him so much as I squish him. Okay. But yeah, All but right. every, every time, I mean, when I dream about the fight that you're talking about, because obviously it's recurring. Yes. Makes That's sense. it. I would say a turtle, except if they're a ninja turtle. Like, like and ninja not a dinosaur. Yeah. Turtles are dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah, they've been around like, for a like, while. She's asking. She's asking like Triceratops or T-Rex. I would like kick, like kick a T-Rex's butt, yo. <laughs> I'm just you know, because they got them tiny legs. They yeah, can't even swing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just sitting there missing constantly. Yeah. I, mean, I wanted to think though. of something clever that's, that's a dinosaur name that has Raven in it. Does anyone know one? <laughs> I don't. Ravenosaurus. Yeah, that. A Ravenosaurus. Right. Ravenosaurus. Yeah. Thank you so much for your question. Thank you. <laughs> what you got? Hi. Um, first of all, I love you guys so much. You guys are my whole childhood. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, my question for you guys is, which character from Teen Titans do you guys relate to the most? Whether that's your own character or a different character? I mean, I honestly just relate to Cyborg. I do, because... He, you he, are a cyborg. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was my first voiceover audition in Los Angeles. I was just me, happy to have an opportunity to audition. I walked into Warner Brothers Animation, and every black dude that was on a 90s TV show was sitting in that lobby. And I was like, oh, hey, Urkel. Hey, in living color. Hey, living single. It was like, I was like, well, I'll never get this job, but I, you know, I'm going to have a good time. And uh, like a month and a half later, I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I got it. And so, so I was just, just excited. I was just excited. I was excited to uh, be auditioning for a character that, that, uh, that I read in the comic books when I was a kid. You know, and, uh, and, and honestly, I just got lucky. I got lucky that they, that they kind of rode him, rode him down my alley, you know? And I've been rolling ever since. That's about it. Me too, yo. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, the first uh, episode, Greg leaned over to me. He was like, dude, I've never done this before. And I was like, me neither, man. <laughs> and then we leaned over to Tara, and she was like, I've been doing this forever. <laughs> just, just sit in front of your microphone and do your job. <laughs> no, no, but, but then we, we finished, um, it was like the, one of the first uh, episodes that we did, and we were going to dinner, we were, uh, we were walking to the restaurant, and Tara turned to me, she was like, Kari, I've been doing this a long time, this doesn't happen every day, mm -hmm. I just want you to know. It was like, I mean, within one or two episodes, uh, Tara knew, and, uh, and man, she was right, <laughs> because we all just fit. The thing is, is that Tara really is a lot like Raven. Because, because, because she has all of this power inside her. You think she's this, just this, you know, pretty woman, but she is, she's the most powerful of all of it. There, there's so many voices inside her. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's true. Right. I agree, for sure. If you think of Raven and you think of like how she's got to just hold it all inside because she's got all of this inside her, I mean, that, that's, uh, that's, that's Tara. That's Tara. I mean, you can't get more Beast Boy than Greg. Real. No, you know, sure. literally the only way to get more Beast Boy is if, if Greg was actually green. <laughs> you know? I mean, they both came out vegan. You know, one of the first things he said was, I can't eat, you know, a hot dog. I've been most of those animals, you know? He's like, he is, he literally is the embodiment of, uh, of, uh, of Beast Boy. And, um, I mean, look, look at, at uh, Hendon, who plays Starfire. She's this cute thing. She is actually like a musical genius. She's a genius in a lot of ways. But, but when she calls you, she says, hello, beautiful friend, yeah. you know? And then you don't realize, once again, the power that's inside her. And, uh, and, and Scott really is like this force that leads us, you know? He takes the, he takes the lead on all of the, our shows because he does the most talking, you know? And, uh, you know, I'm the black dude. <laughs> yeah, we're... That was very well said. We're, and thank you, by the way. That was beautiful. No, I, I, I've always felt that way. I always felt that way. Um, we're all going to say ourselves because, like Kari just put so eloquently, we are these characters. We, we embody them. We, when, when we're acting, we don't just read off a paper. We see the action in our minds of mm -hmm. what's happening as these people. And we're very, very connected to them. And it's, it's so symbiotic. Every, like... We become them, they become us, especially when they connect to people around the world. Look how many of you, give yourselves a round of applause, are here yeah. right now because you love this show. So it's this beautiful like, love that just keeps happening. It's like the most beautiful show. It's beautiful. Yeah. Almost as beautiful as your boots. 
Thank you. You're Thank very you welcome. So <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, guys. So my question is, out of all the episodes you've recorded for Teen Titans Go, which one do you think was the funniest? <laughs> the funniest? Oh, my Good God. Good question. I know, man. There's so many. There's so many that, I mean, sometimes I, I feel like I got to wear a diaper recording because I'm just going to pee my pants. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, sometimes we sit there and, uh, and honestly... Scott Menville does so much of the heavy lifting on that show, and we just have to sit there and watch him and try to stay quiet while he goes nuts because Robin is so uptight, and he loses his mind constantly. And, uh, and Scott, who's like one of the most even keel guys you ever want to meet, who's just like in real life, is like nothing really gets to him. He's, he's pretty chill, but, but, uh, but during our show, it's, he, he goes berserk. He absolutely goes he's berserk. He's brilliant, and he's, he's, he's never cranky about it. No. Thanks, y'all. Thank you so Not much. Not you. You do nothing and get paid the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's so just true. Kidding, just kidding. We're in love. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. But anything Scott's doing, man. When, you, know, you know what cracked me up is, uh, is when we did The Night Begins to Shine. Oh, yeah. That was funny. Uh, and, uh, that and, was funny. and Scott played the, uh, the bird. That that uh that called that did, cock cock cock, and he sat there and sang the whole song as a bird going call, and I just had to sit there quietly and try not to crack up. It was the funniest thing I, I ever. It, it's not. It's even. It's even funnier in real life than than uh than you actually see on the show because he was actually flapping his arms like they were one. It was hilarious. Yeah. We laugh a lot. We, we laugh a lot when we read the scripts before, too. You always know it's going to be a good one if you, like, can't get through the script. Yeah. That happens a lot. We laugh a lot. What's your favorite? What's your funniest? Hmm. Oh, that is very hard. Yeah, see? That's what you do to us. My Why y'all keep asking us hard questions, man? I think my favorite episode, what I just laughed the most at, was the Scooby-Doo crossover that was also a game of Family Feud because, oh, my God, some of the things I saw from that, including... Hey, Fred, what's under your ascot? And it's this freakish little thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how do you people come up with this stuff? Yeah, Thank yeah. you, buddy. Thank you, man. <laughs> um, so this one's for Tara. And apparently this crossover may have already happened, but I didn't see the episode. But um, if Raven met Twilight Sparkle, how would you picture the interaction going? It happened, yeah. It kind of happened. It kind of happened. I mean, they did it for the fans, but you want the real Twilight to meet her. Mm -hmm. Tell me your name. Andrew. Dear Princess Celestia, today I'm going to Sacramento to meet my good friend Andrew because he knows that friendship really is magic and he has some friend he wants me to meet that I guess is challenging to make new friends. I hope she's awesome. What? Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Probably that's how the real Raven would react. That's exactly <laughs> it. <laughs> Making dreams come true, baby. Making dreams come true. I love it. Hi. Hey. Uh, what advice would you give people going into voiceover and wanting to be a voiceover actor? We never get asked that, do we? Uh, never give up. Never give up. Don't, uh, you know, stay creative. Follow it like it's your passion. Uh, because so many people want to do this, so many, you know, because the thing is that we all get silly, we all talk, we all feel like, you know, it's, it's in us somewhere, but, uh, but, but uh, it, it just, it takes, uh, it takes incredible talent, there are, but the most talent, the, the, the most important talent you can have as, a, as an artist in any way is resiliency. People are going to tell you no, people are going to tell you that you can't do it, um, but, uh, but, and that's anything in life. If you run across something that you find passionate, that you find passion in, then follow that thing no matter what. Because, uh, because whether you're making money at it or not, you will always find like, like, like happiness and joy in the, in the pursuit of your passion, right? I always, every year I tell myself, I need a job that feeds my soul and a job that feeds my belly, right? And some years, some years when I, you know, when I, going through life, you know, those aren't the same job. Some, some, sometimes I got to get a job that just pays the bills and then, but there's always a job that feeds my, feeds my soul as well. 
And if you're lucky enough, those things come together every once in a while, and you get a job that feeds your belly and your soul. Mm. But always feed your soul first, right? So follow your passion. I'm not going to tell you to take classes. I'm not going to tell you to do all of that. But follow your creative passion. If you follow that, you'll be fine. Go do it. Go do your thing. Oh. I don't know if you guys are going to say anything for that. <laughs> yeah, just, just start. Just do it because you love it. And now with technology and so many people interested in making cartoons from all the different mm -hmm. you know, things that are needed to make a cartoon from you know, character designs to recording the voice to editing music or whatever it may be, um, just, just start, even if it's reading books with, like a, with a puppet on your hand or something, just start doing it, make videos, put it out. <laughs> and then the, and the universe will rejoice in the fact that you're doing it and it'll snowball into more and more of what you're wanting to do. Those Ever were both really beautiful, but I'm gonna give the Twilight Sparkle answer <laughs> and say that you should take classes if it's something you really <laughs> wanna do. Do it all, do it all. Yeah, sure. because it's so much of uh, these characters coming to life is you have to have an acting background. You can't yeah. just, people say all the time, oh, I wanna do cartoons. Have you ever taken an acting class or have any experience? No, then you'll never make it because you have to know how to break down a scene and improv classes and singing lessons to know like what your voice is capable of. There's actual work that has to go in if you really wanna be top of your game, yeah. which I totally believe you can do, anyone can do. Like he said, manifest it, go ahead, do it. But <laughs> yeah. do it smart, don't pay to audition. And D Baker has a free website on everything you need to know about getting into voice voiceover. I think it's, I wanna be a voice actor. Yeah, that's it. D Baker, and it's free, so do that. Yeah, yeah. No, and I, that, that, I, if, I, if I was being misunderstood. No, I, no, I you were being like the ethereal, beautiful, no, 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 you have nothing yeah, to yeah. say. He was like the giving the like spiritual stuff about it and everything he the said was true. response. No. Everything yeah. he said was true. But you need both of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I when you got that didn't matter at all. <laughs> <laughs> See, what I said, I bridged the gap between both of you. It's, it's you gotta do, do it right. all. And do Greg, it all. you said what my mom's always said. I did? Put on the pup, yeah, she always so said absolutely. that. Absolutely. She liked him the best. <laughs> so you all had your own responses. And Everybody's on Amazon yeah, buying, but buying puppets for their, I mean, buying socks <laughs> to put on their hands now. But just to say it again, she liked my answer the best. Yes, uh, there you I go. I love all your answers. But mine the best. <laughs> thank you so much, darling. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So first off, I wanted to thank you, all of you. Um, I come from a now retired military family, and we moved around a lot. And the only times where I actually had a lot of stability was when I was sitting down with my family and watching all of you guys um, oh. perform on uh, Teen Titans. So thank you again. Pretty sure that deserves a group hug right Absolutely. now. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Give a big round of applause to Greg Sipes, Tara Strong, and Kari Payton, everybody.